He's got greasy hair and a wonky eye. It's the clueless drink of the beer review guy. How you guys doing? Uh, and don't worry, I will never sing on camera ever again. And uh, today we are going over to <laughs> Adams. Uh, it's take two, so I'm feeling a, a little bit loopy. And uh, yeah, we're looking at a bottle of the broadside, which is commemorating the Battle of Sol Bay, 1672. And this is described as a strong organic ale, clocking in at 6.3%. So uh, Adams are a brewery that I've got a hell of a lot of time for. I've yet to have like uh, an actual bad beer from them. And uh, I know I've probably drank considerably less of their beers than some of you guys, so feel free to you know leave your comments down below. But they're just, to me, a very understated but extremely consistent and high-quality brewery. And I know, you know, most of the focus nowadays in the British scene is on this, like, exciting craft scene. But, you know, when we've got beers like that, and uh, let's say J.W. Lee's Moonraker and um, Black Sheep Ale, which I'm doing a nice steak and ale pie with. You know, I think we should be celebrating those beers just as much as we're celebrating the, you know, the new and exciting craft beer scene. Just celebrate beer that you love. If you love beer, talk about it. Don't, you know, worry about, oh, oh he's talking about a real ale again, or oh, he's talking about a macro beer again. Ignore that nonsense and just talk about the beers that you want to talk about. Support the breweries that you want to support. And uh, yeah, if anybody, if everybody had that mentality, there'd be no bullshit elitism. But it's the same with every hobby, isn't it, at the end of the day? Um, you know, you could be a stamp collector and get shit for what stamps you've bought or which dealer you've dealt with. You know, it's, it's a shame that the world goes like that. But uh, thankfully with beer, if you do get bullshit like that, you can drink that nonsense away. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so this is take two, because I waffled on for way too long. Talking about other beers, which is never a good sign, um, in case, you know, Adams are watching this. So, as you can see, I've already drank a little bit of the beer. So, I'll quickly read you the little bit of a blurb on the back. Uh, it says, Broadside is brewed in to commemorate the Battle of Solvay in 1672. This dark ruby red beer is full of fruitcake flavours and is great sessioned with some strong cheddar. If I wasn't cooking a pie right now, I would probably have done myself some cheddar and uh, crackers because I picked this up from Aldi. And uh, Windy Ridge Innov <laughs> Innovative British Cheese. Now that's something you don't hear every day. And it's the uh, Lily's Cider and Apple. So um, yeah, looking forward to uh, opening that. Might have to pick up some beers. And do a nice little bit of a pairing. But uh, anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this beer. So beer in the glass then. And um, yeah, to me, that's like a... You get those ruby hues, of course. Especially around the edges of the glass. But there's this sort of like nice like oakiness to it. Now, I'm not sure if it's filtered or not. But you can't really see through it too much. Uh, it's a nice, dark, intense looking beer. And when I generate some head just for the sake of argument, and spill it all over the floor, of course. Uh, you could see it's uh, a light tan coloured head. So, uh, anyway. Don't lick your fingers on camera, that never looks good. Let's see what we get in the nose. Yeah, I've already had a couple of beers, because, you know, when I like to cook, I like to have a few drinks. Anyway, let's see what we get in the nose. <sighs> Lovely sort of, like, chewy like fruits of the woods sort of aroma. I know that makes no sense whatsoever. Like Woodrow fruits, you know, like cherries and berries on the tree, that sort of thing. And yeah, it, it's got that sort of like Christmas cake aroma to it, even though I absolutely detest Christmas cake. Um, why would you eat that? Like, where's the joy in Christmas cake? I, I just don't get it. I just don't understand how that is like a considered like a like a, a classic dessert it's just boring as shit and i'm sorry i'm sorry to burst your bubble but if you like christmas pudding you're flat out wrong you're a wrong one no you're not really if you like christmas pudding you like christmas pudding no yeah I'd, I'd be much happy having like a new york cheesecake 
for the dessert after Christmas or you know just gorge myself on uh, mince pies which I do anyway but um, and I suppose it's got that sort of like mince pie sort of aroma to it when you've got you know it's been steeped in like a cognac or something like that it's got that like slight sweet sherry aroma to it like a cooking sherry but it's not boozy at all but yeah you get like some brown sugar maybe a muscovado sugar in there a little bit of caramel a little bit of uh treacle molasses but not too overwhelming didn't even say i was drinking it just decided to take a sip out of the glass it's the clueless drinker way so you know there are no rules and regulations on this channel but um yeah it's it's just like the aroma suggests it to be a nice level of sweetness there's maybe a little bit of a vanilla character coming through you do get that sort of like brandy that's had the alcohol burnt off it almost flavour to it. A little bit of an oakiness as well and some very subtle spicy tones. Now this to me and I found this with the style I know they're completely different styles and they're completely different processes but to me the like the English strong ale which is you know you can go in so many directions anyway but like beers like this they remind me so much of like the German Doppelbock because of the flavours that you get from the malt build. <laughs> now, of course, the Doppelbock is a lager, and it's lagered, obviously. But you get those, like, really intense, like, nutty, caramelised nuttiness. You get those, like, uh, Black Forest Gatto fruits in there. You get that mince pie, Christmas pudding sort of flavour. And I find them very similar. Um, you know, the beauty of living in Germany is you can get, like, a Doppelbock, like a world-class Doppelbock which you'd pay like three to four quid, sometimes maybe a bit more, and if you're lucky, a little bit less. You know, you, you pay that here in the UK, but in Germany, you could go to like your local traditional brewery, because let's face it, you go to like the most obscure town or city in Germany, and there's at least two, you know, traditional family-run breweries there, and they do like Doppelbox, a very traditional style, styles of beer. And you pay like less than a euro. But if you were to buy that same beer in the UK, you know, add like two or three quid to that. Which I'm happy to pay because the Doppelbock is a beautiful style. But the English Strong Ale reminds me of the Doppelbock because it's got similar flavours to it. Although you don't really get that like slight muskiness from the like the um the Doppelbock. But this, this is just a lovely, well balanced yet robust beer. Not overwhelmingly sweet, not overwhelmingly earthy, and it's just a beautiful bit. It's one that, like, it warms your shackles. You know, you've come in after, a, you know, you've been caught in a storm, it's pissing down, you've been slapped around the face by um, a gale, could be snowing, and you want something that's really going to comfort you. This is one of those beers, and, you know... It's going to be gone long before the pie is ready, but this would complement that sort of food perfectly. And uh, yeah, I could definitely see this going well with you know cheddar cheese and crackers. Just a beautiful beer. Just drink in moderation. Enjoy it for what it is. Savour those flavours. Is it the greatest example of the style? Not really, but it's a very solid one. And the fact that you could get high quality ales like this from the supermarkets is, yeah, it's got to be a good thing. So in terms of a rating then on um, Adnam's Broadside, I'm going to give that one an 8.5 out of 10. I would happily, happily drink this one again. Beautiful beer. It may not do much for a lot of people, but for me that's just, it's just comfort in a glass. Just chill out, relax, sit by a fire, you know, do other old men things, that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful little beer. So um, yeah, 8.5 out of 10. So if you have tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions. Are you a fan of Adnams? Are you a fan of the style? I love all uh, your comments down below. Uh, if any of my friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed this one, which I'd imagine a fair few have, then their reviews are going to be included. So you get a much more rounded opinion. 
Um, I'm not sure how many Adam's beers I've actually reviewed. I've enjoyed a lot of their beers, but I don't know if I've reviewed many. So if there is a playlist for Adam's, it will be included down below. But there's definitely, definitely going to be a playlist for the English Strong Ale style. Probably my favourite British style. So underrated and... Uh, didn't really want to mention other beers in someone's review, but this to me is like textbook example of the style from J.W. Lee's. You're going to be drinking a lot of this, Paul, when you come over to the UK. Uh, <coughs> you'll probably have come and gone by the time this review really gets uploaded. Uh, the hangovers will be worth it, though. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a beautiful style of beer. And I'd, li I'd like to see some of the, the craft breweries embrace these sort of traditional British styles and give their takes on it. Because I'm going back to Doppelbox, I've had some fantastic British craft brew Doppelbox style beers. And uh, I just love those flavours and those tasting notes that you get from them. It's not light, it's not, you know, ooh, <laughs> or bright or vibrant or anything. It's just very traditional. And uh, yeah, I think we're sort of like losing touch with our real ale side and Focusing on, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the craft beer scene here in the UK. So many exciting breweries, so many wonderful beers, so many wonderful individuals involved in the uh, craft scene. But, yeah, I think we should be, you know, good beer is good beer. It doesn't matter who brews it or what style of beer it is. If you enjoy it, shout it from the hills and that sort of thing. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for sticking with me. And uh, like I said, I will never sing on camera again. And if I do, I'll drink a beer for you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And uh, next time you see me, I might actually have washed my hair. But to be honest, it's really hot in this kitchen. So I look like a hot mess for a reason, aside from laziness. See you guys later.